Welcome to the most effective and high quality Evergreen My Google Classroom video training. We're so excited to have you here and we know this is going to be very helpful for you. This is a complete high quality video training which will surely help you learn exactly what you need to know to generate high income with Google Classroom and why it's the easiest way ever for you to make some great money over the web by using effective Google Classroom. Let's start now, step by step. My Google Classroom. Google Classroom program now has 40 million users, 30 million Chromebook students. Discover a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to set up your own classroom for success. Read on. Video number one, My Google Classroom HD Video Training. Video number two, What is Google Classroom? Video number three, Why to Integrate Google Classroom? Video number four, How can you benefit as a Google for Education partner? Video number five, Latest updates to Google Classroom. Video number six, Getting started with Google Classroom step-by-step -step tutorial. Video number seven, how to create assignments in Google Classroom. Video number eight, how to train your employees using Classroom. Video number nine, how to use Gradebook to enhance Google Classroom. Video number 10, Google Classroom tips for teachers. Video number 11, how to measure and analyze classroom reports and usage. Video number 12, best apps to use with Google Classroom. Video number 13, things you might not know about Google Classroom. Video number 14, great ways to start using Google Classroom now. Video number 15, how to partner with Google for education. With over 40 million students and educators worldwide, it might be your turn to learn this platform. We've covered everything you need to take your first step in the world of smart education with GC. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number 10. Google Classroom Tips for Teachers. One of the many perks of Google Classroom is the time it saves teachers. Here are just a few of the ways Classroom can help make a class more productive without adding additional time constraints for educators. Number 1. Your Assignments It helps you organize files not only in Classroom but also keeps Google Drive neat and tidy. Number 2. Use Control plus F to find numbers and words in Classroom. Use the keyboard shortcut Control plus F Command plus F on a Mac to search for keywords or assignment numbers as mentioned above on the page. Teach students this trick too. Number three, pick an organizational strategy for using topics. Using the topic feature on the classroom page helps organize assignments for students and teachers. There are several different ways to organize. Choose a strategy that works for your content area and grade level. Number four, create a resource topic and keep at the top of the class work page. Every class needs a place to store resources, links, class rules, syllabus, etc. Create a specific topic for resources and class material and keep it near the top for easy access. Be sure to name these files clearly so that students know exactly what is there. Number 5. Create a Google Classroom class template. Once you have selected your favorite organization method for Google Classroom and tested it, Make a copy of the class as your template. You can continue to make a copy every time you need a new class and already have all your topics created and organized and your assignments will be saved as drafts. Number six, use direct links to assignments. Did you know you can get a direct link to a specific assignment? This makes it so easy to refer students back to a particular activity. Just go to classroom page, locate the assignment, Click on the three dots to the right of the assignment and copy the link. Number seven, use Google Docs as a syllabus secondary. Many teachers use Google Docs to create a syllabus so that it is a living document that can be updated throughout the year. Add links to outside resources, daily assignments, import dates, etc. You can even put links to Google Classroom assignments, see above, to avoid the long search for students. Number eight, break projects into smaller assignments with separate due dates. 
Big projects can be overwhelming for students, especially those who haven't learned how to manage their time. It's important to give them milestones and chunk the projects into smaller assignments with checkpoints. Number nine, use private comments for reflection. Some teachers take the private comments feature a step further and make it part of the assignments by requiring that students add a reflection as a private comment after they submit their assignment. John Fahey suggests using an open-ended question or give students a prompt like, what did you like most about the assignment? Or what part challenged you the most? Number 10, attach a template document for each assignment. Attach a blank Google Doc to a template to each assignment as a copy for each student. In Google Classroom, you can view the assignment page and see a thumbnail for each student. This allows you to see progress or lack thereof at a glance. Number 11, some more tips. Invite teachers that are hesitant to use Google Classroom to be a student or co-teacher in your class. Use private comments for meaningful feedback and conversations with students. Create a separate classroom for enrichment and extension activities. Create a demo student account to demonstrate Google Classroom to your students. These are tips that will save you time and save your sanity. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom Video number 11 How to measure and analyze classroom reports and usage As a G Suite administrator, you can see usage trends and monitor classroom use activity in your organization. Let's find out what metrics are available for teachers to study and analyze that can help them improve their teaching in classroom. View classroom usage reports Metrics available are weekly activity users, the number of 14-day active classes, number of courses created, the number of posts created by teachers and students. For specific users, the number of classes created, posts created, and last activity time on classroom. View highlights. The highlights report summarizes key metrics and trends in classroom, including app usage activity and documented sharing. Sign in to your Google Admin Console. Sign in using an administrator account, not your current account. Click Reports. You'll see the highlights report displayed. The top graph shows app usage activity for Gmail, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Google Plus, and Classroom. Hover over the graph or click a data point to see the number of users for each app on a specific date. View Aggregate Report. Sign in to your Google Admin Console. Sign in using an administrator account, not your current account. Click Reports and then Aggregate Reports. Note the UI defaults to the last setting chosen. If classroom reports are not displayed, click Select Columns, Select Columns and make sure classroom reports are selected. To view only classroom data, deselect all other products. For classroom, you can select these metrics. Active classes, classes created, posts created by teachers and students. Select the options you want and click Apply. To see data for a specific date, hover over the graph or click a data point. Click into Google Admin Console. Sign in using an administrator account and not your current account. Click Report and then Apps Usage Activity. Note the UI defaults to the last setting chosen. If classroom reports are not displayed, click Select Columns, Select Column, and make sure classroom reports are selected. To view only classroom data, deselect all other products for classroom. You can select these metrics. Classroom, last used time. Classes created, post created. Select the option you want and click Apply. The selected metrics are shown below to report graphs. The graphs displayed depend on the metrics you selected. To change the graph, click the graph name at the top of the page and select another one from the drop-down list. To view details for a specific date, hover over that date or click a data point on the graph. Note: By default, metrics are shown for all users. However, you can narrow your report to show any one user's activity. To view activity for a specific user, under Filters, enter the user's name. So there you have it. 
Make the best out of your Google Classroom with these detailed reporting and analytics provided in G Suite. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number 12. Best apps to use with Google Classroom. There are a lot of apps that have a built-in share button to Google Classroom. This makes it easy for students to open the app via Google Classroom. Let's check out the best ones. With apps, here's what you must do. Create an account with the application or website. Create an activity or resource for your students within the application or website. Use the Share to Classroom option. You'll find this option somewhere in the application. Now, you can do things like create a quiz and assign it to your students in one of your classes. Number 1. Book Widgets With Book Widgets Google for Education Partner, you can create interactive exercises for your students on tablets, computers, and smartphones. As a teacher, you can choose between more than 40 different exercises and games. They give you this template. You add your lesson idea in just a few clicks. It's that easy. Number 2. ED Puzzle ED Puzzle is an easy and effective way to deliver videos in your Google Classroom, and it's not just a video distributor. With ED Puzzle, video comes to life. Add audio notes and questions to your video. ED Puzzle makes it easy to add comments to videos, and the questions make the video more interactive. Number 3. Buncee Buncee is a creation and presentation tool and makes it easy for you and your students to create content for all classroom purposes. You can make an awesome presentation, an interactive story, an engaging lesson, or a beautiful card. Buncee has a lot of fun and educational media tools and graphics. Number 4. Nearpod Create your own interactive presentation. Add some slides slide by slide or choose for a special sway template you can adjust when your presentation is ready your students can opt in by entering a code in their nearpod app or just click on the assigned link in google classroom you as a teacher oversee the presentation number five curiosity curiosity is designed with the busy life of a student and a teacher in mind their editors find interesting and important topics that your students will want to know more about. Add a nice article to Google Classroom and let your students read it out of curiosity. The more interesting text you post, the more willing your students are to read them. Number 6. Newzella Newzella builds reading comprehension through leveled articles, real-time assessment, and actionable insight. Students can read articles on their own tempo. Newzella offers articles from world-class news publications in five adaptive reading levels. You can also unlock progress with embedded assessments like quizzes. Number 7. Quizlet Quizlet is a quiz tool that focuses on terms and definitions. As a teacher, you add a class and make a quiz. Share this quiz with your Google Classroom with just a few clicks. They just have to click on the assignment in Google Classroom and choose what game they want to play. They can take a test, opt for the Learn Mode, Learn by Flashcards, or match terms with their definitions. These apps for teachers and educators will put you at the head of the class. Of course, help you conduct the class efficiently in your Google Classroom while making it fun and interesting for students. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom Video number 13 Things you might not know about Google Classroom As with any platform, there are things to understand that are not a button to click on. Knowing how Google Classroom works with Google Drive and how it interacts with students could help you to better use Classroom. Google Classroom has become a hot topic among educators because of its simplicity, speed, and efficiency in working with Google Apps in the Classroom. As easy as many features are to use, some aren't as intuitive, and some are just hard to find. 
Here are 10 functions in Google Classroom that you might not know about. Number one, look for the lines and the dots. When you see a button with three lines or with three dots, you can click them for more options. The three lines usually denotes the main menu. The three dots usually denotes more action. Number two, get it right the first time. When a teacher or student logs into Google Classroom for the first time, he, she must choose the correct role, student role or teacher role. If he, she chooses the wrong role, the Google app IT administrator will have to be contacted to change it. Number three, put classes in order. If you teach multiple classes when creating those classes in Google Classroom, create them in reverse chronological order. By doing that, they will display the chronological order in Classroom. Number four, don't overload the About tab. Only add the most important year-round links to your About tab. If you overload it with too much content, it will become difficult to find anything there. Number five, see the student side. To see what the students are seeing, ask a colleague to invite you to one of his, her classes. That way, you'll be a student in that class, and you'll see what classroom look like as a student. Number six, set comment settings. Take control of your Google Classroom stream, where students see all the assignments, posts, and other content by deciding what students can do. Options include, students can post and comment, students can write their own posts and comments for the class to see. Students can only comment, they can't write posts, but can comment on teacher's posts. Only the teacher can post or comment. Students can't write posts or write comments. Number seven, save it for later. You can prepare your announcements, discussion questions, and assignments for use later without publishing them immediately. Write them now and click the drop down button next to assign to save them as a draft. Number eight, assign without a Google file. Students don't have to turn in Google document, slides, presentation, or other files to submit an assignment. If the assignment doesn't require a file, the students can click Mark has done to show the teacher that he, she has completed the work. Number nine, add more than one. You can add multiple files, videos, and links to an assignment. Be sure to include everything the student needs and maybe offer multiple options the student can choose from. Number 10, download your grades. Get a spreadsheet of the grades for an individual assignment or for all assignments. When viewing grades, click the setting gear wheel in the top right corner and choose Download Assignment Grades or Download All Grades. Google Classroom is great for speed, simplicity, and efficiency, but not all functions are easy to get at first. Here are 10 you might have missed. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom, video number 14, great ways to start using Google Classroom now. Google released a handful of useful updates to Classroom recently. What can you do with those changes? Good question. Here are some best ideas for Classroom that these changes have made possible. Number one, create exit tickets and bell ringer activities. Want to do some quick assessment at the beginning or end of class? Classroom's new discussion-driven discussion lets you post a question where students can post replies to answer it. And now worries about students copying since you can choose the option to monitor it too. Number two, host an out-of-class viewing party. Is there a TV show, a live performance, a play, or some other event that's noteworthy to your class? Let students interact by adding a question in your classroom and letting them reply in real time with their reflections and observations. Add a single post your idea here, question or add several different types of questions to elicit answers on different specific topics. Number three, find and post evidence. Students can make all the assertions they want, but if they can't back them up with solid data, they're less than useful. Give students free roam of the internet to find sites with data that supports or refutes what you're talking about in class. Add a question where they can post links to their findings in a reply. Offer video reflections. 
Another great use for the new question-driven discussion feature is a private place to comment on videos. When you post a new question, add a YouTube video that students can watch or a link to a video on another video hosting site if YouTube is blocked. When students watch that video, they'll have a dedicated place to take whole class notes, post opinions, or answer questions. Number five, choose how to deliver files to students in assignments. If you include a file to distribute to students in your assignments, you choose the editing rights they receive. Select whether to let them edit the file or only view the file. You can also make each student his or her own individual copy of the file, so everyone isn't typing notes on the same document. Number six, email students from within classroom. Using the student tab at the top, send an individual student email by clicking the mail button to the right or highlight several students and email them at the same time. There's no need to leave the app to send messages. Number seven, provide an example of the work you'd like them to do. Within the description of an assignment, provide a link to an example you want students to emulate. And again, remember, the web address so it's clickable. Number eight, provide a collaborative space for students to work. Distribute a place for collaborative class nodes. Create a presentation and give everyone a slide as their own space to work on a class activity. If you create files that everyone can work in, teamwork takes place online. Number nine, track student progress with submission history. Follow the changes students made to their assignments by clicking a student's assignment in the assignment status section. After, you click on the assignment and see submission history. Number 10, revisit previous work in your class folder. Classroom creates a new folder for submitted student work in your drive. When you create a class, it creates a new folder for each assignment, so files aren't jumbled together like they were in your shared with me or incoming folder when students shared them with you. Number 11, toggle your email notifications on and off. This is a nice feature if you don't want an email every time something happens in Classroom. Change it under settings when you click the menu button at the top left of your class, the three line button, sometimes called the hamburger button. Number 12, use the class photo as a bulletin board. Use a tool like Google Drawing to create an image the size of your class header photo. Type reminders and important information on it. Save it as an image file, probably a JPEG or a PNG. Try 1500 by 400 pixels under File, Page Setup, Custom, and upload it as your class header photo. Change it regularly to keep information updated and interest high. Number 13, give Google your feedback. Use the little button in the bottom right corner to send Google your praise, your frustration, and your suggestions. You never know if the next feature they unveil could come from you. Some more ways to use GC creatively. Align curriculum with other teachers. Share data with professional learning community. Keep samples of extended writing for planning. Tag your curriculum. Solicit daily, weekly, or semester or annual feedback from students and parents using Google Forms. Share anonymous writing samples with students. See what your assignments look like from the student's point of view. Create a list of approved research sources. You can also differentiate this by student, group, reading level, and more. Design more mobile learning experiences for your students in higher ed, for example. Have students chart their own growth over time using Google Sheets. Control files write, view, edit, copy, download on a file-by-file -file basis. Have students curate project-based learning artifacts. If a teacher, you can collaborate with other teachers. Same grade by team, same content across grade level. Encourage digital citizenship via peer-to-peer -peer interaction that is documented. So, these are some of the best things you can do with Google Classroom. You can always find more better ways with the upgrade in the platform. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson.
by Google Classroom. Video number 15, how to partner with Google for Education. A Google for Education partner can help you come up with a system that seamlessly integrates administrative tasks to help teachers be more effective rather than just complying with directives from central office. Let's see what it all involves. How Google for Education empowers developers. The Google for Education Technology Partner Program gives developers access to technological support, dedicated developer relations support and resources, trainings, Google events like Google I.O., access to Google developer groups and more, marketing support, partnership branding support, feature on Google for Education channel, participation in co-marketing activities, access to apply for market development funds, premier partners only, invitation to exclusive partners, events, and more, Google initiatives, cloud credit for startups, developer scholarships, and launchpad spaces. Once you become a partner, after you join the program, you may qualify for Google Partner status and earn the Google Partner badge. Add it to your website, business card, and marketing materials and show that Google recognizes you as a Google Partner. Specialization helps clients to recognize your skills. Once you earn a Google Partner badge, you can highlight your specific Google Ad product knowledge. Learn advanced concepts for creating, managing, measuring, and optimizing specific Google ad products. Search advertising, video advertising, display advertising, shopping advertising. As a Google partner, you have access to the following resources to develop your capabilities and help your clients succeed. Number one, education. Develop your skills by completing skill shop learning courses and certification reading case studies and trending on think with google and google trends number two rewards take part in rewards designed to help you grow through a series of challenges for acquiring new clients optimizing client campaigns or getting certified you will have access to first-hand google insight and exciting rewards number three growth demonstrate thought leadership and expertise with connect an opportunity to host co-brand events. You can also pitch and onboard new clients with Google Ads promotional offers. Qualify for Google Partner status. Pass Google Ads certification. Meet the spend requirement across your management account. Demonstrate your performance by delivering strong client and company growth. Join Google Partners now. Sign up your company using the account with admin access to your company's Google Ad Manager account. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the complete training. My Google Classroom. Video number two. What is Google Classroom? A rapidly growing number of teachers are finding their way to Google Classroom. Find out what Google Classroom is and what you can do with it. What is GC? Google Classroom helps teachers and students to communicate and can be useful to organize and manage assignments that go paperless for collaboration between students and between teachers and so on. It's built on top of Google Docs and Google Drive, which means it's very easy to use and intuitive for any teacher. Things you can do with Google Classroom. First of all, it's completely free. You won't have to upgrade to a pro version that will cost you some money. After you've set up your classroom, you can get started. You'll find out how to set up your Google Classroom account in just a few minutes. Here's the list of things you can do with it. Number one. Add announcements and lesson material. Give your student announcements about your lesson. Add lesson material in the announcements. That way, students can find everything quickly. You can add material from a Google Drive connected to that Google Classroom lesson. Add files and images from your computer. Add a YouTube video or add any other link you want your students to visit. Number two, add assignments. Just like adding an announcement, you can add an assignment to your course. It works the same way, but here you get the option to add a dual date. It will notify your students when they have to make an assignment, and it will also appear in their calendar. Number 3. 
grade an assignment. Afterward, you can check and grade the assignments your students have handed in. There's room for feedback via teacher comment. Then send the assignment back to your students. Number four, manage students. Of course, your students have to be able to share comments or not. That's completely up to you. You can manage permissions, giving students the ability to post and comment. Only comment or give only the teacher the ability to post and comment. You can even email your students individually. Things you can do with Google Classroom. There are a few things you should know before you start using Google Classroom with the wrong reasons. It's an online learning platform, but it isn't. A chat box, a test or quiz tool, a discussion forum. Setting up Google Classroom in three simple steps. This means Google Classroom must mean something to you. You'll find it easy to set up and very intuitive to keep on using it. Follow these steps to set up your Google Classroom teacher account. Number one, sign in. When you go to classroomgoogle.com, you can use Classroom by logging in using a G Suite email address or you can use it without claiming to use it for education. Everything works just fine that way too. It's just harder to manage your students if you have hundreds of them. You'll have to add them one by one. Number two, create your first class. Click on the plus button in the right upper corner. Choose your create a class. Here you find in some detailed information about your class. Write down a good class name and section. The class name should be the title of your class so you can find it back in a few seconds. Then click on create. Number three, invite students to your class. Once you have created your class, you can invite your students. Let them sign using the Google Classroom app by entering the unique code you gave them. You'll find the code in your created class. Go to the tab Students. Another option is to invite your students one by one by entering their email address. Google Classroom makes organizing and managing all your Google Apps activity streamlined and easy. Set it up in minutes. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number three. Why to integrate Google Classroom. In today's changing world, students need to leave school with a set of technological skills that can help them compete in the world's job market. For teachers, there's a free, fantastic resource that can help give students those skills. Google Classroom. Here are some of the most important reasons why teachers should give it a try. Number one, exposure to an online learning platform. Unfortunately, many students have never had any experience with online education. That's why you really want to make sure to give your students as much exposure to it as possible at a young age. Google Classroom is an easy way to help students with this transition because it's super user friendly, making it a great intro to technology. Number two, easy access to materials. Because everything is posted online, Google Classroom gives student access to materials no matter where they are. Students who are absent can easily access classroom materials from home if necessary. This can really help save both you and your students a lot of stress in the long run. Number three, differentiation. With GC, you can give out assignments on a more individual basis and really reach out to certain students as well. You can even split everyone into groups that you think they will be able to work the best in. Google Classroom is a great, flexible way to ensure that every student gets just what they need and you can easily delete and recreate classes as you see fit. Number four, less paper. When used to run an entire class, Google Classroom can virtually get rid of paper consumption. As long as students have access to the internet, all classwork can be handled online. This means no copies and ultimately less money for your district. Number five, no lost work. Since students are usually working in Google Drive, everything saves automatically and excuses dwindle. With a few short lessons concerning how to properly use these online tools, students can experience more success getting organized. Number six, engagement. Google Classroom can help students become and stay engaged in the learning process. If you have students answer questions in Classroom, for example, 
Other students can comment on these answers and deepen thought for both students. Number seven, getting feedback easily. Providing meaningful feedback to students is a valuable part of all learning. Within the grading tool of Classroom, teachers can send feedback to each student on assignment. Number eight, data analysis. In order to make learning meaningful, teachers should analyze data from assessments to ensure students are understanding learning objectives. Data from assessments can easily be exported into sheets for sorting and analysis. Overall, using Google Classroom is definitely worthwhile. It can save you a lot of time and energy and can help you to better prepare your students for the future. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number four. How can you benefit collaborating with a Google for Education partner? Google takes on an increasingly significant role in schools. Do you wonder why schools choose Google? If so, find out the reason why schools are increasingly adopting the Google platform. Number one, all knowledge about Google under one roof. As Google for Education partner, the Institute knows everything about Google applications in the education sector. They keep all knowledge up to date by regularly following training and by attending their own certifications. Google certifies only a limited amount of partners per country. The bar is high. Number two, the quicker response to your questions. Once you collaborate with a Google for Education partner, you are in direct contact with Google. Solutions can be offered faster. Instant action can be taken on identifying the problem and creating a plan to get the school back on track as soon as possible. In short, they directly take the work off your hands and offer a solution quickly. Number three, take full advantage of the benefits of Chromebooks. With a Chromebook, you can enjoy many of the benefits such as working in the cloud, enjoying a fast device, sharing documents among each other, remote device management and unlimited storage. Number four, access to integrated software. G Suite for Education offers a free set of tools for schools which enable you to work together always and from anywhere. With this package, you can easily manage lessons, provide feedback in documents instantly, and students can participate in real-time collaboration in the same document. Number five, a well-guided implementation process. When a school wants to work in the cloud completely, it is important to collaborate with the right partner to ensure that the implementation process runs smoothly. Think of transposing data and becoming comfortable with a new program. They guide schools with the implementation at the client's pace. Number six, simple management. Implement network settings. Impose the school's regulations on all Chromebooks or block devices remotely after lost or theft. The remote management possibilities require a separate Chrome Education license for each Chromebook and is exclusively attainable through a Google for Education partner. Are you wondering if your school is ready for Google? Go meet a Google for Education partner and see what possibilities exist for you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number five, latest updates to Google Classroom. So, to start the year off on the right foot, Google introduced updates to help you stay organized and revealing a fresh new look for the classroom you know and love. Check them out. Number one, drag and drop on the classroom page. Now you can drag and drop entire topics and individual classroom items, rearranging them easily on the page. You can drag an entire topic to a specific location on the classroom page or drag individual items within and in between topics. Number two, classroom has a fresh new look and feel. Among the changes, you'll see a more intuitive design flow, plus a new approach to shape, color, iconography, and typography on both the web and mobile app. And finally, they are introducing 78 new themes with custom illustrations. 
ranging from history to math to hair design to photography. Now you can customize your classroom more than ever before. Number three, updated training and support. In the teacher center, you'll find updated videos in their first day of classroom training with the new designs and features they rolled out in 2018. While they're at it, they built a new and improved help center combined with our community and product forum. Number four, post questions. You can post questions to your class and allow students to have discussions by reposting to each other's answers or not, depending on the setting you choose. Number five, reuse assignments. Now you can reuse assignments, announcements, or questions from any one of your classes or any class you co-teach, whether it's from last year or last week. Once you choose what you'd like to copy, you'll also be able to make changes before you post or sign it. Number six, improved calendar integration. Now all assignments with a due date will be automatically added to your class calendar and kept up to date. You'll be able to view your calendar from within Classroom or on Google Calendar, where you can manually add class events like field trips or guest speakers. Number seven, bump a post. Sticking posts on blogs, tweets, or Facebook updates has long been a thing. Now you can do it on Google Classroom as well by moving any post to the top. Number eight, attach a Google Forum to a post. With this feature, teachers and students will be able to attach Google Forums from Drive to Post and Assignments and get a link in Classroom to easily view the answers. Number nine, YouTube functionality. Recently, they launched advanced YouTube settings for all Google apps, domains as an additional service. These settings give apps admins the ability to restrict the YouTube videos viewable for sign-in users as well as sign-out users on networks managed by the admin. Stay organized in 2020 with these new features in Classroom. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson. My Google Classroom. Video number six, getting started with Google Classroom step-by-step -step tutorial. Google Classroom is free for all Google apps for education schools. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to get you started. How to create a class with Google Classroom. Navigate to website classroom.google.com. Choose the I am a teacher option. Click the plus sign in the top right-hand corner next to your Google account. Select create class. Then give it a name and a section, and click Create. Number five, the section field is a secondary description for your class, so here you may want to add something like first period, a grade level, or some other short description. Customize the appearance of your class. When you create your class for the first time, you are given a default header image. You can customize this image with a few quick steps. Hover your mouse over the banner image. Look for the Select Theme link in the bottom right-hand corner. Click Select Theme to open a gallery of photos you can choose for your class. Choose the photo from the gallery, then click Select Class Theme to change your header image. Add a syllabus to Google Classroom. In the latest version, you use a feature called Materials, which you will find in the Classroom tab. Here's how to add what you need for your class. Open the class you need. Click on the Class Work tab. Click Create and then choose Material. Add a title, description, and any attachment you deem appropriate. Click Topic and assign your materials to a new topic called Syllabus. Click Post when you're done. Note that you can assign the material to multiple classes if needed or even to individual students. Choose the option you need from the top left-hand corner when you are creating a new material for your class. Adding Students to Google Classroom, Part 1. Once you have created all the classes that you need, you can quickly add students to your roster. Click on the class that you want the students to register for. Click the setting gear icon at the top of the page. Make a note of the class code and distribute this to students. Students will then navigate to website classroom.google.com. 
click the plus sign in the top right hand corner of the screen and select join class. Students enter the class code and will instantly be added to the class. Note that the class code can be changed or disabled at any time by the teacher. Simply click the drop down next to the class code and choose the reset to disable it as you feel the need. Adding students to Google Classroom Part 2. Second method is to add students manually. Click on the class that you want to add students to. Then click the People tab in the top of the page. Click the Invite Student icon, a plus sign next to the person. A search box will appear allowing you to search for the email address of individual students, contact groups, or Google groups. Move, edit, or archive a class. Click the menu button in the top left corner of the screen. It looks like three horizontal lines. Select classes to see all the classes you have created. Now click the three dots in the top right hand corner of the class you want to modify. Choose move, edit or archive to make the changes you need. The edit button will let you rename your class or change the section, subject or room number. The Move button allows you to rearrange the order of the class in your dashboard. The Archive button will remove the class from your dashboard and archive it. Classroom Communication There are two ways to do it. The first is the stream, a Facebook-like wall of messages that can be viewed by all members of the class. This feature is available to both students and teachers. The second way to communicate is by using email. Students can click the three dots next to their teacher's name on the class homepage to open a Gmail message that is auto-filled with their instructor's email address. Teachers can do the same when they click on the People tab. However, they have the additional option of selecting multiple students and then clicking Action. Email to send the message to a group of students. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson.